Hi everyone, my name is Marius Pakitsariu and I'm a group leader at the Junilia Research Campus. Today I'm going to tell you about uh, the project template that I made together with Lin Zhang for the Neuromatch Academy. This is going to be based on our uh, recent work that was just published. In this data set, you have access to very large scale neural recordings from over 50,000 neurons, in some cases 80,000 neurons, that were recorded with a large field of view two photon mesoscope. These recordings are performed with calcium imaging, which means that you are seeing activations of neurons when an action potential happens. In the zoom in, you can see different neurons active at different time, blinking in and out. We are going to be giving you uh, data from the primary visual cortex, V1, as well as higher order visual areas. And we're going to give you processed data, but it's also important to know how this data was, was processed. We ran C2P, a pipeline that um, we have built in the lab with my co-PI, Carson Stringer. This pipeline can find neurons in such big fields of view, uh, and it can find up to 80,000 neurons at this frame rate of about 3 hertz. If you zoom in, you can see every mask here in pseudo color, randomized colors, shows a different neuron. From each neuron, we can extract time courses as a function of time. Here it is for a very small subset of this entire recording. If you're interested to learn more about the processing pipeline, uh, go on our GitHub in the Mouseland organization. And if you're interested to learn about data processing more generally, you can look at our other repositories uh, where we have various analysis pipelines for neural data as well as for um, other uh, types of data. While we were recording all these neurons, Lin Zhang um, was running a behavior experiment. The setup is as follows. The mouse runs through these virtual reality corridor that are alternating in pseudo-random fashion. In each corridor, here's a video, in each corridor the mouse runs down a virtual corridor and in some of the corridors the mouse gets water rewards after a random sound cue. This random sound cue happens in both corridors at a random position in this purple interval. However, the water rewards are only delivered if the mouse le clicks in the leaf corridor after the sound cue. And you can see here the mouse stopped and collected his reward. These mice are water restricted, so they're motivated to forage for water. After uh, about two weeks of training, we call this discrimination training, uh, the mouse's performance is very good. It only licks in the uh, rewarded corridor. We also have a second group of mice, and these mice are licking, um, are not licking at all, in fact, because they have been water not been water deprived. They are what we call the unsupervised cohort. These mice run through the VR just because they like exploring and they like running, um, and so they do not need to perform a task. And we collect data both before and after learning in both the task mice as well as the unsupervised mice. Here's some example analysis from our paper of what you might do with such data. And you will develop your own analysis in this project. First, you might ask, where are the neurons that are selective to the stimuli? We can pick up those neurons by computing a D-prime measure a measure of selectivity between the two corridors, the leaf corridor and the circle corridor. And we can see that across these conditions, there are changes that can be observed from before learning in the task mice to after learning. We can see there's a big group of neurons that are more, more dense. There's more selective neurons in these uh, medial regions that we emphasized here. These are regions medial to V1 encompass several higher-order visual areas as well as retrosplenial cortex. But the same regions also become more activated in the unsupervised animals after learning, the animals that did not have to do any tasks. 
On the other hand, if you look carefully, you'll find a region here in this anterior region of uh, RL where there are more neurons in the task mice, but not so much in the unsupervised mice. This and uh, many other analyses are in Zong et al., and they can form the basis or the inspiration for your project. We have additional tasks and stimuli as well that we have provided. Um, after training animals for two weeks with these stimuli, Lynn introduces a generalization session where we introduce new stimuli to see how the mice respond behaviorally to the stimuli as well as how the neurons respond to these new stimuli. Continuing after this, in the same animals, um, Lynn also trains them to distinguish between leaf one and leaf two, two different exemplars of the leaf category for about a week. After this week, we introduce another new stimulus, leaf three, and we have another generalization test where we swap the first and second half of the leaf corridors. This provides multiple tests, both behaviorally and for the neural activity, and one can form various interesting hypotheses about what's going on. If you want more ideas about how to analyze large-scale neural recordings, please look at this um, review article that we wrote. It has a number of ideas of what you might do, starting with single neuron properties, but computed at scale. Um, going through um, possibly kind of population averaging to get a sense of uh, fractions of selective neurons, for example, in different brain areas. Um, visualization methods like raster map that can allow you to visualize instantaneously large numbers of neurons in their activity. And other directions, uh, other directions of analysis uh, that project neural data onto uh, different neural vectors that may be related, for example, to either behavior or stimuli and so on. And if you want access uh, to this paper, you can go to our website, mouseland.github.io, and you will find it there. With that, um, I hope this can be a good project. Uh, please start with the Google Colab that we have provided, uh, as well as the project template slide. Good luck.